no electricity, no gas, no modern heating system humming quietly in the corner, just cold creeping through stone walls rising from the ground cutting through clothes and breath alike. In medieval winters, warmth wasn't a comfort, it was survival. While modern homes panicked during blackouts, medieval people didn't flinch. They had no choice, so they built smarter. Three ancient systems kept them alive. No cords, no thermostats, no second chances, just clay fire and forgotten genius. Today, we'll rediscover how they turned bricks into batteries, candles into radiators, and polished metal into life-saving amplifiers. And more importantly, how you can build them yourself. Because when the grid fails, only one kind of knowledge matters. The kind that's been tested in a thousand winters and still works. Centuries before, thermostats and insulation warmth was crafted, not consumed. In the remote monasteries of medieval Europe, monks faced winters that could silence entire villages. Yet inside their scriptoriums, rooms where sacred texts were copied by hand, no fire cracked, no smoke stained the parchment. They heated with silence. Master potters among them transformed simple clay into radiant heat sources. Glazed braziers, inverted pots, and thermal bricks, all born from necessity, not luxury. In nearby towns, artisans fired kilns not just for pottery, but for warmth. Their workshops became laboratories of thermal survival, where walls stored heat and every ember mattered. These weren't crude inventions. They were refined systems engineered by memory tested by cold and passed from hand to hand across generations. Today, most have forgotten them, but you won't. Technique 1. Inverted Pottery Kylos At the heart of this system lies a simple truth. Heat once captured can be radiated, not just dissipated. Terracotta, unlike metal, absorbs heat slowly and releases it gradually through infrared radiation. When heated properly, it acts like a thermal battery soaking in energy from a small flame and distributing it evenly over time. No flicker, no smoke, just constant warmth radiated in all directions. To build it, you only need a few things. A large terracotta flower pot, a ceramic or fireproof plate, three candles or homemade vegetable fat burners. You place the candles on the plate and invert the pot over them. Elevate the pot slightly using brick stones or ceramic risers to allow air to enter from below. The hole at the top, that's your exhaust vent. Leave it open. What you've just created is a radiant heater, one that mimics the sun, silent, steady, and surprisingly strong. In medieval monasteries, such systems kept scribes alive through brutal winters. Parchments couldn't be exposed to smoke, so fire was banned inside scriptoriums. But heat was still needed. The solution clay-based heaters, silent, clean, reliable. Today, the principle hasn't changed. A three-candle setup under a terracotta pot can heat the air around it to 65 degrees hours within minutes. The warmth radiates outward warming people surfaces and nearby air. And when the candles die out, the pot continues to radiate heat for hours. Compare that to a modern electric heater, high consumption instant drop-off when turned off and heat limited to a narrow beam. Your clay pot, however, it doesn't hum. It doesn't spike your bill. And it keeps working long after the fire's gone. Technique 2. Heat Reflective Panels Long before thermodynamics had a name, medieval craftsmen understood one thing instinctively. Heat behaves like light. It travels in straight lines and it reflects. Using this principle, they built one of the most underrated heating systems in history, the thermal reflector. Blacksmiths were the first to discover it. They noticed that polished iron and copper behind the forge bounced radiant heat back toward the workspace. Later castles adopted the same idea, placing reflective metal panels behind fireplaces to direct warmth toward dining halls and gathering spaces. You can replicate this system using nothing more than aluminum foil. Behind any heater, clay, pot, wood stove, or radiator, place a reflective panel. For permanent installations, use foil-faced insulation or polished metal sheets. For mobile use, a cardboard panel wrapped in foil works just as well. The science is elegantly simple. Radiant heat, like sunlight, can be bounced and redirected. Instead of losing heat into the back wall, you're capturing it and sending it where it matters. In field conditions or winter camping, this method works wonders. 
Place a reflective surface behind a campfire or heat source to create a semi-circular wall of warmth. Suddenly, the same fire feels twice as strong. Medieval people didn't just burn hotter, they burned smarter. And you can do the same without spending a cent on fuel. Technique 3. Heat Retensing Bricks Some technologies don't shine. They don't hum, glow, or click. They just work. The heated brick is one of them. At its core lies a principle as old as fire thermal mass. A dense material absorbs heat slowly, then releases it slowly, maintaining warmth long after the fire has died. Clay, brick, soapstone, even thick ceramics all possess this ability. To apply it, heat a clean brick in an oven near a stove or directly in a fire for 30 to 60 minutes. Once it's hot, carefully wrap it in flannel or thick towels. Not too tight to smother the heat, not too loose to cause burns. Place it at the foot of your bed 15 minutes before sleep. What happens next isn't magic. It's circulation. Warm feet stimulate blood flow. The body responds. And even in an unheated room, you fall asleep comfortably. Medieval grandmothers use this method every night. No cords, no switches, just wisdom. Soapstone bricks perform best retaining warmth for 6-8 hours. Clay bricks work for 3 to 5 hours depending on thickness. Either way, the warmth is steady and silent. Compared to electric blankets, the difference is striking. One uses continuous electricity, the other stores energy in advance and releases it without noise wires or risk. It's not just old-fashioned, it's efficient. And when you wake up warm with zero cost on your bill, you'll know the past didn't fail. We just stopped listening. Efficiency isn't a modern invention. It's ancient, carved into clay, reflected in metal, and wrapped inside old bricks. A terracotta pot with three candles radiates heat at 65 Ardizard for hours, costing mere cents. A reflective panel amplifies existing warmth by 10-15%, turning passive heat into active comfort. A heated brick, charged once wrapped in cloth, keeps a body warm all night without consuming a watt. Meanwhile, modern electric heaters devour energy shut off instantly and cost 400% more to operate for the same effect. So what do you choose, silence or humming fans? Simplicity or fragile systems? Survival or dependence? These medieval systems worked for centuries because they didn't need perfection, just wisdom and intention. If this video reshaped how you think about heat comfort and resilience, share it. Someone out there might be one blackout away from needing it. And if you believe ancestral knowledge still matters, subscribe. Because this isn't nostalgia, it's survival.